Yeah, all good. Okay. Uh, Louis, whenever you want to go, mate. Thanks, mate. Jaheem, nice to see you. Um, I guess we'll start with just your reflections on that draw down at Millwall last time out. Um, first of all, morning. Um, I think that the result down at Millwall is was a, was a good one. We put in a good performance. Uh, going down there is never easy. So uh, we held our own and got and got a good point. What What does it say about the side, Jaheem, that you kept going and and you got that point so late on? Uh, it shows that we, always, we are a group with resilience, even when things are going our way. Even though in the middle game, we do believe that we could have easily taken three points on another day. Um, it just shows that we we dig we dig in and we can't we can't get a result when when stuff are against us. What's the message been from the manager after that game? Uh, saying it's a good point, but we need we need to start getting uh, wins instead of draws. Which is what everyone aims for, isn't it? So, how's life been working under Darren more than the last few months? Uh, it's been it's been a very a very good transition. Um, we have been in a lot of times when a lot of people were off getting, so he can get his messages across to us. Uh, yeah. There has been a lot of draws. You mentioned that, haven't you? Is, is there any anything specific he and the coaching staff have said to you to to turn those draws into those wins? Um, probably just have more self self belief in in ourselves as a group. Not that we lack it, but just sometimes uh, we might go out of games in places that you think we should still be in the game, stuff like that. How have you found personally your whole run in the team? Because you're clocking up a few appearances this season. Yeah, uh, that's that's all I kind of wanted um, was to be given a, a run of games uh, prior to this. I do feel like I was in and out, but I feel like once I've been given my run, I just gain confidence and hopefully want to kick on from there. Yeah, because I suppose last season you started the season on loan at Harrogate and you got some valuable game time in the league too. What did you take from that experience of that Harrogate? Uh, a lot of my teammates there and the coaches staff, the manager there from, from day one I came in, they put their arm around me said, obviously, listen, it's not going to be like um, an easy league. We all know that it's not going to be the same as playing academy football. Uh, I did make a few mistakes, but they, 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 didn't turn, they didn't turn their back on me. So I thank them for that. Yeah, Simon Weaver at Harrogate, he's been there a long time, hasn't he? What was it like working under him? Uh good as well. Um some another voice to hear another voice to hear from, another person that's got a different way of looking at football. Um but I think all all managers' messages are clear, like just just work for the team and then the other stuff will show as well. I was at the game where you scored a brilliant goal against Bradford City for mm-hmm. Harrogate. A uh, goal, something, Jaheem, you're really trying to work on and to bring into your game at Huddersfield Town? Uh, yeah, because obviously during in the academy, I was a defender that could score. Uh, I still think I'm a defender that can score. I've got into a few positions to score, but I just feel like um, sometimes I get a bit of uh, a rush of blood when it's like on this stage. So I think that's just let me down a few times, but yeah. You've, you've played in a variety of positions also the last couple of seasons, as, as a left back, as a wing back, even in midfield. Are you, are you more concentrated on that left back role, that wing back role? What do you prefer? Uh, yeah, naturally, that's that is my my preferred position. Preferred position, sorry, left back or left wing back. Um, but if I can play some roles, where, wherever wherever I'm playing, I just I just want to play in it. So. Yeah, yeah. How have you found the step up from, you know, like we said, you you got a lot of minutes in League Two last season, now you're playing regular championship football. What differences have you noticed in the level? Um, the intensity is different. The the quality you could say is a bit different. I think it's more concentration tactically than 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 anything else. Um yeah. when teams make amendment amendments you need to be able to, to realise what they've done and adapt to it. Because stuff that the coaching staff have set us up for sometimes that's not what that's not what happens on the pitch. So you just got to realise that quick and then go from there. You talk about intensity. It's a long goal trip to Norwich, and it will be a packed out Carrow Road. That'll be an intense game. How much are you looking forward to playing in that one? Um, 
I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's not a place I've played at before, so I like to play there. Um, playing away, I always feel like is 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 difficult. But I feel like Carroll Road is one of the the more difficult places to go, just because they're they're not a bad they're not a bad team, and they got a good good fan base behind them. You've shown there in recent weeks, haven't you? Those draws at Swansea, the draw at Millwall, the win at Sunderland. That that you're doing all right on the road at the moment. I bet your the message is just trying to keep that up, really. Uh, yeah, yeah. Christmas, Christmas Day in between the Norwich and Blackburn game. Has the manager afforded you any time off, or has he got you in? Um, Christmas Day we we'll, we will be in, but he's given us a, a substantial amount of time to spend time yeah. with our families on that day as well. So. Uh, there's no problem with it. Great stuff. Well, best of luck with the weekend and happy Christmas. Thank you, you too. Cheers, Louis. We'll stick Cheers, on James. the laptop and we'll come to Stephen next. All right, cool. Hi, Jim. Um, and speaking to, to the gaffer the last week after the Millwall game, I thought a very responsible performance from you and he commented that you and Jacko have really stepped up and uh, kept the team above water with, with your performances. It must be good to hear things like that from the gaffer and know you've got his support. Uh, yeah, it's always nice to hear that from 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 someone that they they do support you and believe in you and like what you have been doing. So yeah. How's your relationship with Darren? Is it? We've heard that he sort of has had the players in for sort of one on ones and got to know them in the the the, the first few weeks that is you know since he came at the club. Is that has that sort of continued or is it now that we're into the the thick and fast games? Is that sort of is it a bit more on the training pitch now? Uh, the first, the first few weeks when he came in, he got. He, I think I'm pretty sure he did get everyone in um, on a on one, one to one level. What I liked personally was, it wasn't just it was about football, but it was also about me, like what well, like talking about me, my background and stuff like that. So I feel like some when someone can relate a bit, not relate on a personal level, but want to know you on a personal level, then it's always better than just just football, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, well, Louis sort of touched on it. It's been, you know, quite a big year for you, um, taking that step up at the start of the year and playing a key part in helping, in, you know, avoid the relegation and then, you know, breaking into the side and getting the, the this run at the end of the year. When you reflect on this year, what what sort of the big things you think you've added to your game and, and that you've learned as a person? Uh, I think the big things for me this, this whole year is obviously... Uh, Last year, around this time, I was I was playing uh, in League Two, and now I'm, pl- I'm pl- you could say playing in the Championship. Uh, on a personal level, that's just a big achievement for me. Um, in terms of football, the things I think I've added is a, a little bit ma- a little bit more maturity. There will be a few times where um, it still does show a few times in, in my game now a little bit of immaturity where I sh- I'll be trying to dribble when times I shouldn't be dribbling. But I think that's still, that will just change more and more. I play games at this level. I suppose there's a balance, isn't there? Because you, you, we've seen how dangerous you can be. The opposition with the ball—is it? Is it the message from the gaffer more about sort of picking your moments and picking the right spots for that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, because uh, ultimately it can it can cost the team in in at this level, and no one can afford that. So yeah. That's all for me. Best luck for tomorrow. Nice speaking to you. Thank you. Cheers, Steve. And just last one, uh, come to Stu in the room. Okay. Good morning, Jamie. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Good. Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, I was just thinking back, would, would last season have been the first sort of um, proper football in Christmas you had in terms of actually being in work over, over Christmas, is it? Uh, um, ish, kind of. Uh, I was at Yeovil. I believe that was two years ago, but over Christmas... I didn't. I didn't play much. I think I was out of the squad in the two or three games we had over that period. Right. Uh, so yeah, it has been actually my only Christmas, my Christmas period that I've been playing football. And and what's what's that like to adjust to? Because obviously we always talk about the sacrifices. Mm. Um, what's what was the what was the difference like? Um, it was a bit difficult, more for more for my family than me. Um, because obviously they want to they want to spend time with me because they don't get to see me much. But uh, I've always I've always prepared for that. Um, if I wasn't at Yeovil, I would have prepared to be training, not to be playing, but just to be training in case numbers or something like that. So yeah. 
And as fans, <coughs> the Boxing Day game's always always special. What what's it like to play? And obviously, it was Grimsby last year, wasn't it, with Harrogate? Um, yeah, it was Grimsby. At, I believe it was at home. Mm. Yeah, at Environment Stadium. Uh, Boxing Day is is a, is a big day for not only the players but families. A lot of families are there, obviously, because they're spending time with the players over Christmas. So I just feel like there's a lot of a lot of people kind of relying on you that day. And I mean, the the other two have touched a little bit on your your loan spell at Harrogate. It was probably, I think, it was about this time last year. I remember seeing you having an absolute storm at, at Rochdale when you when you won there. I just wonder what that what that spell did for your confidence as much as anything. Um, playing at Harrogate did did a lot of my confidence. It showed me that it showed me that I can I can do it at a, on a professional a professional level. Um, but that performance in particular, I think it was a good, a very good team performance. I think we went there. And we kind of showed what we can do. Yeah, yeah, it was a big one because it um, it been an away win. Yeah, I don't think he'd had many of them yeah. recently as well. Yeah. So did did you <coughs> feel when you when you came? Obviously, it was only a few weeks later you got called back here. Did you kind of feel I'm ready to step up now? Is that was that your mindset? Um, not straight away. I didn't think straight away I'm ready to step up. I thought that obviously if I was thrown in, then I had no choice but to show I'm ready. But. Uh, they did give me a few weeks at the time it was Mark here, so he did give me a few weeks to um, get to grounds of everything whilst coming back. I think it was, I was, when I came back, I was out of the squad for like two weeks, then the third week I was on the bench, fourth week, that's when I made my, my debut against Blackpool. So he did give me a bit of time to, to get together with everything. And it, I mean, it's been a heck of a year for you, three, three managers here. Obviously, different different styles and different approaches. Does it feel like it's almost been on fast forward? Your your learning this year? Uh, yeah, we have had three managers, um, three very good managers as well. So, yeah. And in terms of um, in terms of learning under under this one in particular, Darren seems very keen on on versatility um, and and seeing what what people can do that they they maybe didn't know themselves. Has he tried you out in any? Positions we haven't seen yet in in training and that sort of thing. Um, no, sometimes in training I just if it's like a we don't do we do like something called round robins where it's like a small side of the game kind of thing. Sometimes I like to, I just like to drift around so I could find myself anywhere. That's the only time I would say I'm out of position if it's not left back, left wing back, and then sometimes left wing. Because I mean, as as. Um as fullbacks these days, you have to be so versatile. There's so many different ways now of playing left back. Mm. I guess you have to think a lot. You, you know, you talked about already the tactical side. You have to think a lot about your game as a left back these uh, days. Yeah, um, you see nowadays you've got some left backs narrow, not playing in the midfield. Others playing high as much as a winger, and then obviously you're you're out and out fullback. Are, are there any fullbacks, whether they're left or right, who you who you watch and try and learn from at the moment? Um, I like I like Spurs left back Destiny Odogi. I like him a lot. I like the right back as well. I'm a Spurs fan, and I'll just say my two fullbacks. And and I mean those two in particular, they're really big to the way Spurs play and the way they took into midfield. Yeah, um, Poro more so I think is is very vital to the way you play. It's a bit like Trent at Liverpool. Yeah, kind of role, so. Yeah. So what, what's your um, what's your ambition for 2024 in terms of your own development? Is it just to sort of establish yourself in the side? Have you got any specific goals in place? Uh, I think more so just establish myself in the side, and then I think uh, as that as that time goes on, I'll add like little checkpoints, like stuff that I want to do as well. Excellent. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Cheers, Jim. Well done, Jim. Good.
Cool. Right, Louis, thanks for your patience. The floor is yours. No problems, thanks. Morning, Darren. Nice to see you again. Morning, Louis. Um, I guess we'll start on the injury front and, and looking back on Millwall, how's Lee Nichols? Yeah, no, Lee, Lee Nichols is uh, following um, a concussion protocol. So for Lee now, um, he'll be uh, sidelined for a few games um, because it's important that we, he follows the, uh, the medical advice given to him. Um, when he made an attempt for the save, the, the rebound, the follow-up, he just got caught in the side of his head by an, uh, a knee by the Millwall player. So um, it left him a little bit he was able to carry on but then just felt a little bit um a little bit dizzy in the game so he, he he stuck his hand up and we did the right thing in taking him off and after his assessment now he's going to follow a co concussion protocol which um which we have to do how is he on a personal note because he just got back into the yeah. and now he's got to miss a few games yeah no no he he, he understands and and he understands that first things first is it's about his health and then, um, you know, then all of a sudden football becomes secondary, which you can you can imagine and expect in a in a situation like that. It's because he suffered two in relatively a short space of time, while we're taking every precaution really and making sure that the first things first, we're looking after Lee Nichols. Uh, the secondary bit is the football will come after that. The main thing is making sure that he's fine and. And we've seek the best medical advice, and that's the the best um, advice we've had as a football club. So he'll follow that. How's Jack Radoni doing after the Millwall game? After coming through that, he's fine. I mean, he, he's been really, really good, and um, we just I just love his enthusiasm and his energy. Um, as I said, you know, we'd spoken a, a, a couple of days before leading up to it and uh, going into the game and. He was really, really super confident to, to want to play and we was happy to, to let him. But credit to Jack to be able to do the 90 minutes that he did. He's, he shows a good level of robustness that he's got and, and fitness levels. And um, I thought his contribution last week was excellent. I, I was going to say, was, was maybe the plan leading into that game just to give him 45 or 60 minutes? Was it always the plan to let him play the full 90? Yeah, because... And I suppose as the, the the manager here, you get to see and work with the players. And Jack's very one of a few that after being out for the sustained period that he's been out, um, keeps a level of natural fitness that he's got. And um, we know that with Jack because we see his data, what he produces in training. We see his data that he produces in games. Uh, and we look at his conditioning. And not only that, in, in his rehabilitation coming back, the output energy levels he was given in that, even when he was coming back in his rehab work. So for me, looking at all those and talking to Jack and then Jack coming back into training and not really looking out of place really, was able to put him back in. Louis, that's not the case with everybody. Everybody's different. There's many a times when players do come back in and they just need that bit of time. Or yes, you are right. They need that 20 minutes. They need that seven to ten days back in training to get their their focus and perception back into training but certainly with Jack and there's probably one or two more that I might put in that category here that we that we we're, we're really blessed with to have in the team but not and usually in the main it's not the case how else then are you looking heading into tomorrow's game injury wise on the injury front yeah I mean apart from that we we seem to be fine um it's great uh, obviously, we we still got a train today. So, upon as I'm speaking now and delivering this to yourself and everybody else, um, the squad relatively looks in um, healthy condition. You know, we we have um, sort of Ben Jackson back with us now, and we have Kyle Hodlin back with us now. So, those are another added to the squad that slowly but surely we're starting to get one or two back uh, off the treatment table. We've just been speaking to Jaheim Headley and we're, we're talking about this run of recent results and the amount of draws that are in there, Darren, and I know you're so aware of that. And Jaheim saying, look, you're pulling them aside, you're just saying you've got to have that belief to turn that point into three. What else specifically, Darren, can you work on to, to try and ensure that? Yeah, no, we, we feel that, obviously, where we are, Louis, that 
obviously games are becoming more tighter for us now uh, and we've shown a level uh, of improvement in that um, and we've drawn a lot of games so it tells you that the 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 line to turn them draws into wins it's a very very thin line but it can be a very very big line because um you know there's so many elements of that in terms of concentration in terms of taking opportunities when they come your way there's so many so many bits and pieces with that that we feel at town that we have to get right and we con consistently do that um what i was pleased with last week was Yes, we went to Millwall to go and win the game, and yes, we did show an element of that being on the front foot. But there was an um, we fell behind, a goal behind, so a bit of adversity. But in terms of the temperament, the group, and the squad, we shown an element of keeping that mental toughness, keeping that vision, and keeping that belief uh, to come back. And, and though we wanted to get the three points. The mere fact that we came back from a goal down late in the game, it showed an element that the boys kept on pushing on. And we've shown elements of that this season. And that can only help in um, sort of pushing on and getting to where we want to get to uh, as a team and as a group. And I thought the boys um, showed that last week. And certainly for the, for the travelling fans, they witnessed that because I think you had to be in the stadium to feel it and witness it. And, the, and them supporters did feel that. So from us... From that point of view, there's been another positive in terms of that's what we continue to look for. But make no mistake, we know as a group that we have to continue performing like we did and um, and see those points um, turn into three points. Yeah, because at, at times you, you can hear some of the frustrations when, when they're not wins. But, but does last week and, and the manner you got that point show that the players are playing for themselves, the club, each other and for you, Darren? Yeah, I don't. I don't think when I look at the the performances and in terms of where we've been at as a group, um, as a manager, I, I kind of see the progression what's going on because I'm suppose I'm up and close and personal. Where I suppose the progression will be looked upon as 90 minutes on a Saturday. So that's the probably the difference what I probably get. So I see the group of players on a day to day basis and I see the work that we're trying to do and the group's trying to do, but. I'm proud of the group, Louis, because the group's had to um, almost be working many weeks, months, if you like, with square pegs in round holes. I think what we saw last week at Millwall was probably a, a, a more of a balanced team um, that implemented with lots of positives last week. So we need to keep that through this Christmas period and New Year period. We need to maintain that and uh, keep people on the pitch for that to be improved upon because um, it means that you can start working with a level of consistency and know-how and, and more detail um, and it means that this, the group and players are getting stronger with who's coming off the, treat, off the treatment table because ultimately they're all um, first team starters really so so that, those are really key moments in order for improving those results and going forward and, and that's certainly what were looking towards and wanting to achieve here at town over this um, over this period. And it's a trip down to Norwich for you this weekend. Uh, they comfortably beat Huddersfield Town at the start of the season, albeit, Darren, I know you weren't at the club at the time. D does that come into your mind at all when you're preparing for this game? No, I, I mean, obviously the players were here and, and at that time, I mean, for myself and my staff, we wasn't here then, so... Um, we can only hear about the results, um, but certainly you'd, you'd like to think that obviously the team's come on a long way from since then, um, and we face them again tomorrow, um, again on, on their own patch, and we know what they possess, we know what they're about, but in terms of us, I've always maintained, Luis, about us here at the football club continuing to grow and develop um, as a team, and, and you know, it's a great game tomorrow, and the game's full of lots of challenges, but challenges that we're looking forward to um, um, getting stuck into tomorrow. So, for me as an individual, from that result early in the season, I wasn't part of it. Part of it, but so for me, it's uh, it's um, another going up against another new team in the division, um, and trying best to deal with them as best as we can in terms of dealing with their threats, but obviously offering threats of our own. 
there, there's been a little bit hit and miss results wise this season, Norwich, which makes a change from the last few seasons when they've been in the championship and almost run away with the title. Just what have you made to Norwich this season and, and the job David Wagner's doing that? Yeah, no, obviously their remit I'm sure will be to to progress out of this league. Um he's a very experienced manager. Um you know, he's 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 been through the rigmaroles of this league and knows this league. So, and he set up his team really to to try and deal with it. Um, we know on their day, in, in terms of when they're a hit, they're a very very good team, and and they've displayed and showed that. So, you know, they'll be want, wanting to be in the shake up of it. But I, I suppose for us again, it's a it's a team and a game that here at town that you know we want to. Um, move this club up into the into the echelons where they're spoken about you know we 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 know over a consistent time we want to move the club into that um um regions in terms of how we're spoken about so games like this um you know offer the opportunity for those um uh, respectabilities, the talk and everything else to be in it and again it's the next fixture for us and it's the next fixture that we're really looking forward to and that's the reason why um, you know we have to continue to build and certainly on last last week um, we go away again to Norwich and we have to continue to build on it so they're in a position where I'm, I'm sure that they want to push on but we're in a position as well Louis that we want to continue pushing on as well. Do you have any personal highlights of playing or managing at Carrow Road? Um, uh, probably, yeah, yeah, no, uh, managed there with some of the previous um, teams that I've been uh, managing of and played there, you know, as, as a player, play, played there a number of occasions and that, you know, and it's, um, uh, it's a lovely arena to go and play your football. Um, and as I said, um, it'll be a good day um, tomorrow for both teams and it'll be a game, a football match, um, it's a fast pitch, it's a quick pitch, um, so we're looking forward to it. I know we've discussed the owner and, and we know that he's coming over to Huddersfield in the new year. He says you'll be aggressive in the transfer market. I just wondered if that list of players yet, Darren, has been formed and those discussions with the owner are still ongoing. Yeah, no, they, Louis, the reason why they'll always be ongoing because 24 hours in football is a really, really long time. And that's why they'll consistently be going and will consistently be talking. I'm delighted he's going to be here. I think it's great for everybody that he's going to be here. Um, as I said to you last week, it shows his intent. And when we've got an owner that's at the top of the tree leading in the manner that our chairman is, I think it's something to be positive about um, and continue to support that going forward. Um, as I said, you know, we consistently speak every single week, um, but I know that in, a, in hopefully in the next couple of weeks he'll actually be here. So from speaking to him on a weekly basis, I'll be able to be communicating on a daily basis, which can only be good. This time of year, Darren, when you're in football, can, can you afford yourself the time to enjoy Christmas Day? Honestly, Louis, from if I speak personally from my point of view, it's it's. I know it's Christmas Day, but for me, it's business as usual. It really is because, um, and I'm not just talking from this year. I'm, I'm talking probably. Um, I probably think maybe in in since I was 16, 17, getting into the game. I would say up till now, I've probably had two Christmas days off in all that time. So you, you you become it becomes part of the norm really because it's understanding and and as the footballers in this industry and I'm, I speak for ourselves but there's many other footballers in and other teams um, some teams have it off some teams don't so it's just one of those things in terms of Christmas Day really so for me it becomes the norm. Players in then on Monday. Yes. Top man Darren, safe so trip down to Norwich and. Whatever you uh, you do do it on Monday, I hope you and your family have a happy one. Thanks, Louis. Much appreciated, and you too. Cheers. Thanks, Louis. We'll come to Stephen from We Are Terriers next. Hi, Darren. Um, there was some criticism last week of some of the set pieces in the first half. A few sort of different routines tried out. It, is that sort of was that an intentional ploy that they're going short against Millwall? And, and what was the thinking behind that one? 
Yes, mix up the set, set plays for sure, definitely, Steve. And um, yeah, you consistently mix them up um, because it's another route and way of scoring. So yes, you're absolutely right. And we'll continue to do that throughout the course of the season. Is it just sort of getting the execution better on those? It, you know, it's, I don't think there's an issue with the going short, but maybe it's something the players aren't, aren't so used to at the moment. Yeah, because you've got short and long uh, different variation. There's so many different variations that um, there's a catalogue of them really in terms of set plays. Um, yes, you can deliver short set plays, you can deliver long set plays, you can deliver um, decoy set plays. There's so many different variations, Steve. I could, I could, we could spend this whole interview talking <laughs> about set plays. It really is a, a real detailed. Um, and the reason why it's so detailed, because if you notice, a lot of clubs now are applying set play coaches. So there's a real big aspect of them. So just to let you know that, yes, it is something that is consistently worked upon and something that you have to get better. It's not just something that you can just do in a split second. There's parts in the week in training that's detailed for set plays uh, and they're a real, real big part of the game. Fair enough, thank you. Um You've got. You mentioned you got Kyle Hudlin, Ben Jackson back on, on. Kyle, first of all, you've not had a striker on the bench the past few weeks, so just having him in the squad at all must be uh, must be a, a you know a welcome return. Yeah, and and it is a welcome return because to, you want as many attacking options as you possibly can. So to have Kyle back in this week, um, it's been a welcome return for him. So really pleased to have him back. And Ben Jackson as well, you know, you've not had too many because of various injuries and redeployments, etc. Not had a load of options at for the wing back, full back roles, but he, he was in good form, wasn't he, before he had to come out the side playing in that right wing back role? Yes, he was, yeah, and, and he, he was doing really, really well there uh, in that right wing back role, and, um, you know, I, th I thought he did really well in coming up against some of the. The, the difficult um, wide players that he'd faced with, but he'd done really well, Jacko, for us. And somebody, again, that you saw before his injury was just growing in stature and confidence in terms of where he was at. So we've certainly missed him um, when he's been away uh, and we've had to dep deputise other people in that role. But um, to have him back training this week has been uh, another welcome boost for us. I appreciate you won't want to give too much away um, for tomorrow's game, but having him back, it, it does allow you, if you want to, to, to move Sorba for forward, but of course, doing so, potentially a, a move away from the front too, so it's, it's, it's a lot for you to, to weigh up, isn't it, as you look at your attacking options now? Yeah, no, but I want that, Steve, because, yeah. um, because I've not really had it, really most part of the season, so you want that back, so I'd welcome that back. And I'd welcome the headache and the welcome the problem. Um, so yeah, I'd, 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 I'm, I'm pleased to have him back. Um, and as I said, you know, it's just assessing where he's at um, and looking at the team dynamics really and how we see fit because there's certainly enough games coming up over this short period of time uh, where I'm sure that you know we'll see him get some minutes. Are you pleased with what you've seen from your front two over the past few games? Yeah, they're getting they're getting um, stronger. Um, remember, they, they've not been together since the start of September, so they've just really relatively come back. The both of them together, and um, there's that level of understanding that they're picking up really because they only had the one game together at the start of September. So really, in terms of a, a partnership and a com combination, they're just getting really settled down into one another really. So. Um, the more games they play, the more understanding they'll get uh, between each other, which can only benefit the team. Obviously, they've, they've got sort of three goals between them in three, um, but I, I think is, is there's still things for them to, to work on in open play. That I don't think that there was huge amount against Millwall from you know besides the penalty, was there? Yeah, definitely. They can. Um, there's there's so much more to their game and I know we're speaking about those two as an isolated two but there's a lot with the team um, certainly that we can do more um, as I said for me it's you know we don't want to isolate 
individuals and, and pairings, even though we are talking about them as a front two, but there's a lot with their game that they're improving on, but there's a lot with us as a team that we're consistently looking to improve on. Um, though we've seen improvements in parts of the team and, and individuals showing a level of consistency, we are progressing as a team, um, but we're not completely satisfied in terms of where the team is at because there's so much more work that we're doing uh, on, a, on a consistent basis and trying to apply those things that we're working on into games. So, so yeah, that's what we're consistently doing, Steve. So there's, there's work to be done. It felt like last week there was you know, a, a, a lot better between the defence and midfield, building those links, but then perhaps is it now the next stage, that midfield to attack transition? That, yeah, that, that, this, there's a the, the the process is there and it's continuing and and as I said, there's aspects of our game, Steve, that I I, I see improvement that I'm encouraged by the improvement that I see, um, but we're not, as I said to you before, not satisfied with it. But mm. in order to get that satisfaction, there has to be that work that we're doing on the training ground and applying it in games. You are right, Steve, that we did see improvements in areas uh, of the team while seeing other uh, parts of the team that still needs to consistently prove to get better but we are aware of that and, and we consistently um, start putting that together. Um, as I said, probably a lot, lot part, part of that would have been the, the not having the availability of certain individuals at certain times um, and in order to implement that, those individuals have come back into the team and I've saw a progression in those departments really because the structure of the team's been there. So when you get the personnel in, you see a bit more fluidity of the team. So, and we witnessed parts of that last week. One player who sort of arrived in the summer to, to help with that was, was Ben Wiles. Uh, he's been in and out the side since he's returned from injury. I think probably would be fair to say he's, he's not quite hit his stride since making the move yet. What, what, what do you see in Ben and how do you think he can he can help the team sort of over the, the longer term? Yeah, no, I, I, for Ben, what I see in Ben is a, is a midfield player that's um, very, very uh, powerful in that, in that uh, department in having the ability to help out in, in defensive work and his attacking work, he's got the ability where he, get, he can get up and support the front players. And I feel with Ben that he's got goals in him um, and he's just settling him down. I think for Ben, he's been at one club uh, in Rotherham for a long, long time and, he's, and he's, he became a real pivotal and important player for Rotherham, rightly so, uh, over the course of time. So. It's been sort of one club and, and a certain style of play that he's been so used to for so long. So making the, the step to Huddersfield, you've got to remember as, as well, he only made his debut for the team at the start of September, coming in on the back end of the window. So again, and with him, he's been hampered by little niggly injuries, what's probably not helped his, his course of, of gaining uh, consistency to his play. So that in itself as well, you know, we look at Ben, but... I think he's a, he's, a, he's a great player and he's a player that's, that's got a lot to contribute to the team going forward and certainly for, this, for the remainder of this year and the second half of the season, um, I see Ben play, playing a huge part for this team and what we've wanted Ben to do is get back fully fit, which he feels he's getting back to now and getting back to his best physically and when a player feels that, he feels he can express himself more and we certainly... Um, expect that from Ben really but as I said he's been back in training and he's building up and um, he's a lot more confident in in his, his in his injury and his body where he's at now and now he's just um, uh, being ready for when the opportunity comes but he is ready so and I'll, I'll, I won't hesitate to call upon him when needed. So for me. Cheers Darren. Cheers. Thanks, Steve. Stuart, thanks for your patience from the Oxford. No problem. Morning, Darren. Um, you, you mentioned there about um, Huddersfield Town getting into the same sort of echelon as, as Norwich are, are in at the moment. From from your perspective, from the football department, what does that process involve? The process involves um, competing and, and, let's face it, still winning games. I mean, that's the only way it's what we're in the business for. And I, said, I alluded to it before that long before football started, before I was born, that was the end game. 
and long when I'm left football, that'll still be the end game. So it won't change. Uh, so football won't change in that aspect really to gain that respect um, at the end of the day. Obviously, in the in the Premier League era, you know the amounts of money involved and what have you. It's it's maybe a a longer process perhaps than it was to 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 catch teams like Norwich and and West Brom and what have you. And yet, we're in an era of less patience than ever. So how difficult is it to do that long-term work and focus on the longer-term goal? Whilst every week you're obviously sitting here and talking about the importance of the short-term and getting wins on the board. And, and both go hand-in-hand hand because with the short-term fixes allows you to get the longer-term gains. So that goes hand-in-hand hand and that's why you've got to look at the here and now what was the here and now did coming in stepping into a football club where uh, there's been a lot of turnaround um that's fact and there was a lot of injuries at the same time that's fact and looking at the assessing the group of players very very quickly and putting a structure together real quickly to um stop the rot and try and solidify things going forward um now that we're we're in that position now it's about um, progressing and trying to move forward um, and that's what we're trying to do at the, here at the football club whilst maintaining uh, the focus which is here and now which is the games but recognising the long term goals that we want to as a football club uh, be spoken about some of those clubs in the championship where we are now and the only way we are going to be doing that is by dealing with the short term goals that we're doing now Stu and then maintaining a consistency over that time to get back up in that the higher echelons of the leagues and become be competitive, and that's a process. You know, there's no real easy way around it. It's it's a process. So while ever um, the game is spoken about now, it's spoken about that because there's so much more media co coverage of it, and there's so much more in depth insight into um, the game departments, analysis, all those kind of things are going hand in hand, which is something that. You've got to deal with on a, on a personal level. Um, players are dealing with social media now more so than ever. So there's so much more with the game that's changed from probably when I started playing football to where it's at now. And I think as a man, as a present day manager, you've got to be aware of all that. But one of the biggest things you've got to maintain as a manager is keep the focus. Really, when um, potentially there can be so much noise going on when the team's doing well or when the team's not doing so well. I think it's just keeping the focus in times like that's always maintaining. And the beautiful thing about me and you, Stu, you know me, and you know that um, I never get too high in the highs and I don't get too low in the lows because we know it's a competitive league that we're in and you have to maintain that, that competitiveness from week to week. So, and that's what I'll maintain to do. And how much work do you have to do in terms of, particularly with the young players, keeping the focus and, and, and guarding against these things or is that is that more an academy job or how does it work? No, no, I think it's it's for the, the manager as well along with the staff. I think, like I said today, there's so much more dealing with it now that you have to be aware of. Um, I'm not a manager that would be on the social net platform because I've not got time for it but I have to be aware that my players and staff maybe. So in terms of that, I've had to receive insight information and training for me to be aware of what they may be faced with because I need to adopt a support mechanism and a speech vocabulary with them to let them see that uh, they're good players and they're, they're part of a unique profession where their abilities to display football on the football pitch watched by thousands. So they have an ability and they've come through a lot of hurdles to not be good players, so that's a that's a, um, a consistent focus that I have on my players, which I've got to be aware of, um, and they've got the support mechanism from the manager, uh, because at the end of the day they're the ones who's got to cross the white line and perform, um, so they have a unique uh, ability to do that, and um, and they'll always get that support from me. And just on the here and now, how, how does a, a match sharp uh, Jack Rodoni change the dynamic of your team? Yeah, just what he is. Energy, uh, close control, very direct, um, passes, ability to pop up in, and be a goal threat. So all those kind of things probably been missing from us 
um, from from some time and, and Jack Madoni was another one again that when he sustained the injury was playing really well again so to lose him you always want every team wants their best players on the pitch because with your best players on the pitch it gives the team that that different that dynamic that's needed in order to um, to be a goal threat and to win games and certainly Jack falls into that category so I know we talk about his performance last week because he gave the team so much but when Jack comes back and performs like that it's not just Jack it can be an added effect with this group of players as well having him back so and I think that's why it's so important to have your best players on the pitch um, He's extremely good at getting in good goal scoring positions his, his goals returned here has maybe not matched that yet how much of that is technical how much of that is mental do you think? Uh, yeah both I think Technical, um, he's showing that signs. I think mentally getting into those positions, we certainly, the, the good thing about Jack is we're speaking about him getting into those positions. The other good thing about Jack is we know with his ability that if he keeps getting into those positions, then we'll see the goals come. Um, we're not sitting here now thinking, oh, he didn't get into that position or he didn't look threatening. He looked threatening before and he, when he came back, he looked threatening on Saturday. So. He has to still continue getting into them positions and we believe that if he can consistently get in there, then the goals will come. And one thing Jaheim talked to us about earlier was the, the one-on-one work, one -on -one work you did with players, particularly when you first came in. How important is that to you that you, you know these players as individuals, as human beings? Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's, it's a great um, question and, and fair play to Jaheim for... I think it's so important because for me, it's it's breaking down that player and looking at him and seeing what more he can give us but the more he can give us it's talking to him about it but it's physically working with them and showing them and these are areas that what I speak about when I see with individuals and the, and the group uh, in terms of going forward what I see with them going forward and I, th I think it's so important and we've seen that so Jaheim has alluded to that and I'll consistently do that because we want to see improvement I mean, are those, because obviously there's different managerial styles and, you, and you've worked under plenty of managers as a, as a player. Do you, do you feel it's important that there is that relationship with players, that they're maybe willing to go that little bit further because they know that, that you care, you know, the way you treat them in the next couple of weeks will probably add to that quite a lot in terms of time off and, and how you work them? Yeah, and, and that's something that I just believe, certainly in this industry, the only way that improvement comes is on the training ground and I think that's the time it's the probably the most part of the the club where the most time spent is at the training ground with us as a group so there's always a learning process going on with the individuals and the group collectively on a daily basis as I said for me sure that leaders on on the pitch are not produced in one day they're produced daily so there's a daily consistent work going on with them and that's the way I see them with the group of players that it's a consistent work on a daily basis and we'll continue to do that. And just finally from me, um, the fixture list has not been kind to your fans in terms of sending them to Norwich in the weekend before Christmas. What does it mean to you and the players, the support that you'll get when you when you run out of Carrow Road? Ah, it's just, it means, it means so much. And, you know, I went over and saw them before the game at Millwall last week and, and after the game because I understand that at this time, Christmas, where... It can be such an expensive time with them, with loved ones and families, um, you know, gifts and that to spend as well, to travel. It's not easy, um, Stuart. So um, to have the fans again down at Carrow Road, um, the message will reach them here now. I thank them all on behalf of myself and the team um, for the commitment and desire that they're showing support in the club going forward. And we look forward to seeing them more tomorrow down at Carrow Road. Thanks for your time, Darren. Have a good Christmas. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Merry Christmas, Thank everyone, you. as well. Cheers.